All right. Sorry I couldn't be here today. Um, thankfully, Heather's come in to kind of help us out here. I want to talk a little bit about um, these word problems that you guys are facing. Um, so here's an example that we'll go through. So the big thing with these is to translate all the language into math. Um, and whenever you're doing that, let's always, I always start by defining my variables. So let's say that, um, let's say that X is reading through this. Tickets to the school musical cost $3 for students and $5 for non-students. So my two unknowns are the number of student tickets sold and Y will call the number of non-student tickets sold. So I'm going to go ahead and start with that. Okay. So the, for Friday night's performance, the total ticket sales were $1,535. Okay. Um, and we know that, um, that X is the number of, of students plus y is the number of non-students, and that for, for students, um, it's $3 per ticket, and for non-students, it's $5 per ticket, and they ended up doing a total of $1,535, okay? The, um, let's write that again. So, Three per student plus five per non-student is going to give me 1535, okay? The number of non-student tickets sold was 70 less than student tickets. So I always, when faced with these, I always think about which one is bigger. Well, the number of non-students is bigger. So I'm going to say Y, because that's non-student, equals 70 less than, so less than, that implies subtraction, twice the number of student tickets. So 2x is the number of student tickets, minus 70, okay? Now, uh, let's go down here. Write a system of equations to represent the situation, tell what the variables represent. Well, we've already got that up there, right? x and y and all that, okay? Now, uh, and I've got one of my equations, 3x plus 5y equals 1, 3, uh, 1535. Now, I need to make sure that all of these things line up right now. So I have, you'll notice here, I've got X and Y on the same side and numbers on the other. Well, this one's not quite as, this one is not set up quite the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2X remote each side, and I'm going to get negative 2X plus Y equals negative 70. Now everything's lined up. And you can see the X's, which are the student tickets, the Y's, which are the non-student tickets, and the money is all lined up, okay? So, now I have my system of equations. Let's solve using matrices. Now, as we know, we could probably use substitution and elimination, but let's play with the calculator a little bit. So, first of all, I'm going to set up my three matrices, right? My coefficient matrix, A which would be 3, 5, negative 2, and 1, just as it appears there. My variable matrix, which will be the order that they appear here, will be the order that they appear vertically. And then this matrix, which is my constant matrix. Um, now, now I've done all the hard work, but I just have to remind myself that matrix X is going to equal matrix A, the inverse of matrix A, times matrix B. Um, so I'm just going to plug that into my calculator real quick. So um, I've already put in, uh, let's check my matrices to see if I got it right. So I'm going to go to edit, and you can see that those are the same, 3, 5, negative 2, and 1. Okay, I'm going to quit. And then let's go into matrix B, go over to edit. And uh, you can see I don't quite have them right, so I need this needs to be negative 70. 
that was close. You should always double check that stuff. Mm -hmm. Still can't get it in there. And done. Okay, now I'm going to say quit. Now all I have to do is say second matrix matrix A inverse second matrix B. And then I hit enter. And I can see that there were 145 that X, because they appear in this order, right? Um, X equals 145, and Y equals, double check it, 220. All right? So in other words, there were 145 students told, sold, student tickets sold, and 220 um, non-student tickets sold. And like I said, the big thing with all of these problems is uh, translating and getting that systems of equations, getting that system of equations, and then turning that into matrices. All right, one other thing that I wanted to highlight today is this thing of finding the inverse matrix. Um, so given, let's say we were given this matrix here, um, and I wanted to find the inverse. And we know that a ma a ma any matrix times its inverse will equal the identity matrix, which in this case, the identity matrix will be one, will be this, right? Where ones go the, across the diagonal from top to bottom, top left to bottom right, and zeros go everywhere else. So I know that if I multiply this, so I don't know what that matrix is, so I'm going to represent it with variables, but I know that it is also a two by two matrix, okay? Um, and so now I can solve for that inverse matrix by multiplying, by multiplying these two. So I would get, if I was multiplying these two, I would, first I would multiply uh, the first row times the first column, and I'd get uh, 1A plus 2C. Then I would do the first row by the second column, and I would get uh, 1B plus 2D. Then I would multiply the, third, the, first, the second row by the first column, and I would get 3A plus 4C. And then I would do the second row by the second column, and I would get 3B plus 4D. Now, this is my matrix, okay? And I know that this is what it equals. So all the corresponding entries are going to be equivalent. So I would say 1A plus 2C equals 1. 3A plus 4C equals 0. 1B plus 2D equals 0. 3B plus 4D equals 1. Uh, then I could work out this systems of equations. Uh, so take a minute to do that, and, you'll, and then I'll put up the answers. All right, so here are the answers. Um, so you guys should continue with working on the word problem sheet and try and get those all worked out. Um, then you can also work on the review sheet. Otherwise, have a good weekend.